In this tutorial we're going to look at some methods of surface construction. Um, for starters, we'll, uh, we'll start with our, uh, our lofted surface again, because that's uh, just quite a good way to uh, start in general. I'll make two curves, and then I'll take those curves, turn points on, I'm going to give them some vertical elevation as well. Makes things a bit more interesting. Maybe I'll take this one, these, and this one, and drag them down ever so slightly. Alright, I'm happy with those. I'm going to bring them into Grasshopper. So I'm, oh, sorry, I'm going to start by setting multiple curves. So I'm going to select this one and this one, and then we are going to loft. And there we go, basic piece of surface geometry. Now, just like how we can evaluate a curve along its length, we can also do the same thing with the surface using the evaluate surface component. Um, can't quite find it here, I'll just dive into the surface tab and we are looking for evaluate surface. So we'll plug in our loft surface into there. And now it's asking for a UV coordinate. So when we wanted to evaluate a curve, it asked us for a parameter along the curve. And, okay, so we only needed to plug one number in there because the curve, or the curve space is only one dimensional, but the surface space is two dimensional, so we need a U and a V number in order to produce a UV coordinate. So there's a couple of different ways we can create that. We could either get a vector, Oops, just lost my definition there. And we'll grab two sliders, one for the X and one for the Y. We don't need to worry about Z because it is only a two-dimensional space. So we'll plug that into our UV and let's try and evaluate the surface. Now, like the curve, um, by default, the surface space is not is, uh, is not a zero to one space, but we can turn it into that by reparameterizing it. And so, once again, we could find the middle of our surface by typing 0 0.5 for each of these numbers, and we can flow right along the surface and get any point we want. Um, what we could also do there is we could grab this component here called a multi-dimensional slider. And so if we plug that into our UV parameter, this gives us a much nicer way to play with the geometry. Alright, so, but it, what we could also do with this surface is we could quite simply just divide the surface up into U and V spans. And so I'll grab an integer slider and we'll set it to. to 20, and then we'll plug, oh, we'll plug it into the U value, make a copy, and then we'll plug it into the V. And so we'll just give it a number of divisions, and so there we go, we now have points along the surface. So what could we do with this? It's given us a point, it's given us N, a normal vector, and it's also given us a UV parameter. Um, what we could do is we could 
make a line coming out of each of these points normal to the surface. And this would be using a line SDL component, standing for start, direction, and length. So our start is point P, our normal is direction, and our length, we can just create a slider in order to do that. So I'm going to give this a, a maximum value of 100, we'll plug that in, and there we go, a whole lot of curves perpendicular to the surface. Um, what we could also do is we could start to work with what's called attract points. So let's say I wanted to just create a point in Rhino. Now I'll select that point, I'll reference it into Grasshopper, and now I'm going to take a distance between each of these points and this reference point. And so based on that value, I can create lines of a certain length depending on how far away they are from that initial uh, from that initial point I created. So basically the closer a point is to this reference point, the shorter its resulting line will be. So if I move it all the way over here, if I move it, let's see, move it over here somewhere, you'll see that we get some shorter lines on this side and they get longer the further away they go. What we could also do is we could uh, we could invert that that kind of behavior using a where is it a one over x and then we just need a multiplier we'll use our slider again plug that into b and then plug that into l. We're not getting anything, let me just see what's, uh, what's going on. So it looks like our values are all really tiny. So uh, the 1 over x result must have produced some really small values. Yes, so maybe instead of a multiplier, what I could do here, here's a, a good point, I could, uh, I could make the values whatever I want using a remap numbers. Remap numbers basically takes um, a set of numbers, uh, source domain, so whatever region they fall into, and we can put them into any sized domain we want. So we'll take these values here. Um, we also have another component called bounds. Bounds basically tells us the largest and the smallest value in the list. And so at the moment we have a little bit of a problem because we have we have six lists of data. So that means it's going to give us a bounds for each and every single each and every single list. But what we could do is we could quite simply just flatten this input and this tells us our minimum and maximum value that were a result of the 1 over x transformation. And so that becomes our source domain. And then we'll create another domain for the target using construct domain. We'll make a start and an end value. Plug that in. And then I'll plug my result into the length. And as I change this value, you can see that our points further away from this reference point create a shorter line than the lines closer to the reference point. And as we move this around, it will update automatically. 
finally we could just pipe these lines in order to understand the visualization a little tiny bit better. And there we go. A basic look at surfaces.